Now to a story that is literally out of this world. Scientists say they have for the first time detected water in the atmosphere of an Earth-like planet. They say the discovery on the planet, known as K218b, is evidence that a key ingredient for life exists beyond our solar system. The bad news is we're unlikely to ever get there. It is so far away that it takes a century for light to, from the planet to reach Earth. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now by Dr. Francisco Diego from the Department of Physics and Astronomy at University College London. Um, morning to you. Can we conclude maybe that we're not alone? Uh, yes, good morning. No, no, we are far from uh, getting that far to conclude either way. We are, we are not alone. It's a long way to go yes, still. But discovering water in the atmosphere of a planet is a major thing. Uh, the, the, the most important thing also is that we have the technology to do that, that we can see this planet, which is a tiny little thing in front of the star that is going to go in front of the star and the part of the light of the star is going to go through the atmosphere of the planet. So we are looking at a telescope. The light from the star is going to be affected by the atmosphere of the planet and we can detect that kind of signal uh, of the water molecule. It is fantastic. We can do that. Now so how significant was, is yeah. this? How significant is this discovery? Quite phenomenal, that considering how far away it is and how difficult it is to see it, that we've got any well, information at all. Well, let me put this in context because it's not that far away. I mean, a hundred light years is just around the corner. If, if say, for example, if our galaxy was about uh, the, as big as the as the, as the extent of my arms that uh, we could see in, in the screen, I mean, the uh, the galaxy was this big. This planet will be a millimeter away. OK, from the solar system. So we are looking at the very vicinity of the, in our own galaxy, a planets which are really around the corner. So it's not that far away. Although, yes, 100 light years is a long way to go you know, for our uh, uh, traveling technology point of view. Of course, yes, it is far away. But uh, these are very, very nearby planets, which is uh, exciting because eventually in the I don't know, a few hundred years from now, we will be able to go there at some point. So what chance might there be that there'd be water on other planets? Very high. Water is a very abundant molecule in the universe. We find water in the interstellar medium. In the, uh, you see, we see now in the screen the planet coming in front of the, of the star. The planet will be far smaller. But imagine you are fighting against the light from the star, and then you look at the atmosphere of the planet, which is going uh, in silhouette against the light of the star. Fascinating. Now, uh, Yes, it is a very abundant molecule in the interstellar medium. We see water in clouds of gas, like the Orion Nebula, for example. There is water there. Water is very abundant, and water is extremely abundant in the outside of our own solar system as well. We have to remember that all the bodies outside Neptune are uh, composed mainly out of water, including the comets. So uh, it's not so much a surprise to find water in the atmosphere of a planet, but uh, what we need to find is liquid water on the surface. And then we are talking about the possibilities of some very primitive life developing there. And I know you said it's just only around the corner, but clearly over 100 light years away is a fantastic discovery. Talk us through how they actually discovered it. How did they find water on the planet? Uh, what you do, as we saw in the, in the previous animation that we just saw, the planet goes in front of the star of course, we don't see any of this. This, this uh, animation is just a, a simulation. What we see in the sky is a very faint star that is going to be a little bit dimmer when the planet goes in front of it. And we know there is a planet around it. And the Kepler Observatory discovered thousands of those uh, transits, of planet transits in front of the stars. And then what happens is once we know the planet is going in front of the star, we apply a different technology. We use it, the space telescope the big space telescope with a spectrograph that has the capability. Once we know that the star has a planet, uh, uh, as we see in this illustration right now, we point the, the space telescope, the big telescope, to that star. And then for months and months and months, we are looking at the transit of the, star, of the planet in front of the star. And we can uh, apply the spectroscopic techniques and find out the signatures. After many transits, we can increase the signal to noise. And you see these little dips that appear in the in the uh, in the uh, in the in the vertical bars that we saw there well that's the spectral signature of hydrogen and other el chemical elements but in this case it was water and this is the um, the amazing uh, discovery that uh, we are happy to have the technology to do these things and we no doubt in the in the months to come we will have more of this news from other planets 
and we'll have to check in with you again when that happens. Thank you for such an illuminating insight into this uh, discovery pleasure. of water on the planet. Dr Francisco Diego, really appreciate your time.